Hello there. You know, about 20 years or so ago, I had a teacher uh, for law. And one of the takeaways that he had in the class, really the one thing he wanted to make sure every student knew, is that the answer to every legal question was that it depends. And what he meant by that was that, you know, every legal question, you have to apply a series of rules and identify which rules are relevant to that particular situation, what are the particular circumstances of that situation, and how those apply to the law. So we tend to pose questions in very easy ways, but the reality is we have to think of that complexity when applying the law. That's why it depends. Well, I think there's an analogy here between that and between questions I got around my reviews, or, or at least my overviews, of the uh, books Tab Mini C. And a lot of people said, hey, that's great, I love the video, but what's the battery life like? And my answer is, well, it depends. And so this video is actually an exploration of, well, what does it depend on? And what are the factors that are the most meaningful? And how much do those impact the battery life? And so that is what this video is trying to do. And hopefully uh, people will find it not only particularly relevant for the device that I looked at, which is the Mini C, but it also has applications. Um, a lot of the learnings are very relevant, I would imagine, for the Tab Ultra C. And it's probably even broadly relevant beyond that to get a sense of what are the things that drain battery and what's the relative manner um, in which those factors play a role. So this video actually can have application there as well. Obviously the numbers themselves will be specific to this particular device, but I think the concepts are much more applicable. So anyway, that's our video, and uh, before we get into my five predominant findings, I just wanted to kind of go over the gory details of my process and how um, I track this data. So uh, in the end, I did about, uh, well, first off, um, I looked at five factors, okay? So I looked at, for example, the refresh mode. You know, was it in HD? Was it in Regal? Was it in ultra fast or balanced? Those are the things that um, I looked at. Um, I looked at the system refresh frequency. So there are settings where you can either turn it off or you can have it do a full refresh based on a number of taps. Book selects five taps as kind of its default. So I use that or none to compare and see what the battery drain differences were like. Um, front lighting is another thing that I looked at. Uh, I looked at Wi-Fi and I looked at the applications being used and how those differed in battery drain. At the end of all of this, there was uh, a couple very obvious and prominent reasons that drain battery, and so we'll get into those. Now, I used 25 total observations, and each range between 13 to 49 minutes. On average, it was about 28, so almost half an hour. I did this uh, in total over 12 hours of observations, where I would just go off and, and do one of these combinations and record the results. Um, I did this over roughly a week, so put a lot of time and effort into this. It was an interesting exercise. Um, two caveats to all this. So the first one I've already kind of mentioned, which is that um, all the observations were done on the Books Tab Mini C. So all the numbers I'm going to represent are specific to that device. So that's one thing. But another thing, and this is really important, is that the only measurements I can do is based on the battery indicator, and that goes in 1% increments. So for example, um, I might do an observation and I might start with 90% battery drain, read for 30 minutes, and then have 89% battery drain. So I would record that as 1%. The problem with that is I don't know if that was actually a 10th of a percent or an actual full percent of battery drain. I can only count it as one. So you'll see that in a couple of my estimates, there'll be a wide variation, a wide range, if you will, because of this uh, inability to get that specific around the measurement of the battery drain. So that's one thing just to keep in mind. But hopefully the number of observations have kind of brought everything to a mean that will give a, a proper sense of what the battery drain actually is. So we'll see. Okay. Having said all that, let's get into it and start with my first takeaway. And that is that the refresh modes, again, that's HD or balanced fast, ultra fast or regal, they hardly had any impact on battery drain at all. And
And this surprised me, and I know it surprised a lot of my viewers that had posts and comments that speculated that that would have an impact, particularly using ultra fast, for example, versus balanced. Um, but we didn't see that in the data. And in fact, I ended up tracking all my data and quantifying it and did a correlation uh, between the various elements. Remember, I looked at five factors, uh, the refresh mode only being one of them. And the refresh mode had the smallest correlation with battery drain at only 7%, um, which was uh, dwarfed by all the other factors. So yeah, I was surprised that, that the refresh mode had virtually no impact at all. And it's a little in, unintuitive, particularly with modes like uh, HD and refresh that kind of involve a lot more flashing um, or other types of effects versus the other modes. Um, I thought that there would be more of an impact there, and I'm sure there is an impact. It's just so negligible relative to other factors. And that ties into my other video, uh, which is if, you know, if you're considering what refresh mode is the best for you, um, the battery drain really isn't a factor in that. Uh, so that's just something to keep in mind. So that was my first learning. My second learning is that kind of in a similar vein, uh, both Wi-Fi and that system-wide full refresh didn't really have much of an impact either. Uh, now, with the system refresh, I was a little less surprised about that than Wi-Fi. I, I couldn't even tell, frankly, visually when I had it on 5-tap versus none. I wasn't even sure what it was doing most of the time. So it didn't surprise me that there wasn't much of a battery impact there because I didn't see it actually doing anything. Wi-Fi, I was a little more surprised about until I realized that really what I'm talking about here is Wi-Fi on, um, you know, being on but not necessarily being utilized. And the reason why I mentioned that is I didn't purposefully separate out Wi-Fi just being on versus, you know, being used in an app. But really the, the impact of Wi-Fi... Um, when it's being used, it kind of integrates tightly with the usage of the app. So, for example, you take an app like Google News, um, you know, which has a lot of scrolling, a lot of pulling of data, a lot of heavy usage of Wi-Fi. It's hard to isolate that that Wi-Fi usage versus the app's usage. Um, and so, I think Wi-Fi does have an impact, but it's kind of buried under the app category, which we'll get to eventually. But Wi-Fi, when it's just on and not much is happening, and a great example of that would be, you know, reading a book and you have Wi-Fi on, nothing's downloading, it's just on, that battery drain impact appears to be quite low if, and fairly negligible. You don't even need to worry about it. So the takeaway there is just, just leave Wi-Fi on. There's no reason why it matters whether it's on or off. Your battery drain will hardly matter. And same with the refresh frequency, which... Essentially now, I leave mine off just simply because I can't tell what it's doing and why not. But if you did have it on, that's fine. No battery drain issues. So that was my second big takeaway. My third takeaway was really around the, the best case scenario of battery drain on this device, which was reading a, a book. So you know, we're talking a novel or a nonfiction book, anything that's predominantly text and you're just paging through. Um, tremendous battery life, a, a very wide range of measurement. I range anywhere from 28 hours to 82 based on my observations. Let me explain that. So I would measure the device over a period of time. I would measure how much the battery drained and then I would extrapolate that to say, okay, well, if it's going to drain 1% over half an hour, let's say, then how long could I keep reading um, based on the battery capacity of the device. So that's where the 28 to 82 comes from. It's an estimate based on the observations. Again, the re there's two reasons why there's such a huge disparity. One of them is going to be one of the factors we're going to get to in just a second. But the other reason is because of that measurement example. When you read 49 minutes and the battery drains only 1%, and that's what happened in one of my observations, um, it's really hard to see how much drain actually happened there. And that's why there's this massive uh, range here. But regardless, you know, at the lower end, we're still talking about, you know, 28 hours. That's three books that you can read without having to recharge. And at the high end, it's 82. 
you know, that's eight bucks. Both of those numbers seem pretty good to me. And I think I would imagine that the reality of it is probably in the middle of that. It's probably closer to, you know, 60 hours, which I think is great. I don't know how that compares to other devices like, you know, a Kindle Oasis, for example. I'm sure it probably gets more battery life than that. But just objectively on its own, I think that's more than acceptable um, battery life. And if your question was, how's the battery life in reading novels? Well, based on these numbers, I'd say they're pretty good. The fourth observation I had uh, was around front lighting. And this was this surprised me a lot. Now, there's no question that front lighting is gonna drain your battery. I don't think anyone would challenge that. It's pretty intuitive. I was surprised by how much. And to illustrate that, I'm gonna go ahead and put on this grid, which shows uh, by the activity how much that battery drain was. So what you're looking at is a table that shows the activity and then next to each activity is what was the average of all the observations I took with front lighting doing that activity and without front lighting doing that activity. So for example, we talked about that huge range for reading. If you break that out between front lighting, it's 31 hours on average if front lighting's on, but 60 hours if front lighting is off. On a similar vein, and I'll skip over to the comics, it was eight hours with front lighting, 12 hours without, social media was seven with, 12 without, and the news was six with and 13 without. Now the magazine you'll notice actually was 17 hours regardless, and I actually don't believe the 17 hours with front lighting. I actually question that, and that's only one observation. I did more observations without front lighting, so I believe the 17 hours for the magazine, um, so I think that's valid. But judging how all the other categories decrease with front lighting on, I think we can throw out that one observation, and that's why I colored it in red. Now, generally speaking, the rule of thumb here is if you threw magazines out and you added or averaged the numbers together, what you would find is you get a roughly 50% decrease in battery life with front line lighting on versus off. The caveat there is obviously front lighting off is you know nothing is on. Front lighting on in this scenario was cold lighting on 100%. So it was, these are two extremes that we're talking about here. I only did you know, one uh, example where we did front lighting at 50% just to validate that it would indeed drain the battery less than going full power. And that's exactly what I saw. So I don't have any measurements to share with that, but there is no question that if you backed off of full front lighting, you would get better battery life than what's indicated here. So, Finally, that takes us to my final observation, and that's that the app has a significant difference uh, in terms of what the battery drain is, and you can see that on this table here. Um, with Kobo uh, drained at about 53 hours on average in all the observations. You know, Flipster was 17, um, Google News was 11, Kindle was 10, and Reddit was eight. So a couple quick comments about that. You know, the Kobo is really representing reading a novel. That's what I did when I did the measurements. The Kindle is measuring comics. So if I had done, you know, reverse that and done, you know, reading a novel on the Kindle and reading comics on the Kobo, then I would have expected those results to reverse as well. Um, but that's not how I did it. I did Kobo books only and Kindle comics only. Um, the other thing I'll point out is that I, I think this order makes sense. You've got the Kobo on top that really is asking the least out of the device. You're only doing text, you're doing a page at a time, and there's these large gaps of time. You know, like maybe I read for a minute and then turn the page. It makes sense that Kobo would have the best battery life. Flipster is next. It's similar to Kobo. You page between um, you know, different pages of the magazine but a little bit more is involved because of the, the text usually is too small to read on an eight inch screen, so you've got to zoom in. So you double tap, you zoom in a little bit, and you do a little bit of scrolling. And so it makes sense that you see some significant battery drain because you're asking the screen to do more. And then finally, those last three apps really cluster together, I think, you know, fairly reasonably. I mean, Google News and Reddit, in this case, are essentially doing the same thing, where you're scrolling, 
up and down, you're clicking on links. When you click on a link, an ad may come up that might start playing, so you're actually playing videos as well. So they're both really uh, equally demanding on the system. The Kindle is different with comics, but in that case, I was going cell by cell. And so you're quickly going through cells because it doesn't take very long to read a cell and to move, appreciate the art and move on. Uh, so that makes sense for different reasons to be down below. So definitely, uh, again, going back to that original question of, well, what's the battery life? Well, it completely depends on what you're using the device for. Personally, I find the battery life more than acceptable for reading and for magazines. For the other activities, it's not bad, but I wouldn't call it good either. I mean, I think you know, having 8 to 11 hours of battery life is pretty short. Um, albeit, again, it's for pretty intensive activities. Um, so it makes sense in a, in, in a, in a certain perspective, but um, it's not particularly great battery life. What I can say in conclusion is that um, I found the device to have fairly good battery life. And that's probably because I'm skewing it more toward using it for reading books and magazines. And so those are the cases where it clearly does well. I should point out that one app that I didn't uh, do significant observations on, but I did test out a little bit, was note-taking. And I did find note-taking to be fairly synonymous with uh, Flipster, the magazine app. So you get pretty good battery life um, out of that as well, uh, in my opinion. Again, I'm not sure how these measurements compare to other devices, but just objectively, I'm pretty happy with 17 hours on this type of a device. Um, and in practice, I have not found I've had to charge the device a lot at all. Anyway, I've learned a lot in doing these processes. It was intense. Uh, I'm not sure I would do this again anytime soon for a particular device, but I'm definitely glad that I put the time in and I certainly got a lot out of it. And I hope you did too. Now, we're going to end the video. I'm going to make my usual appeal so to please subscribe to the channel. And just as a reminder, or for those that may not know, my grand plan is to eventually monetize. And that's that doesn't mean ads in the videos. It just means that I can take a cut of the ads that are already playing um, if you aren't a subscriber to YouTube. Um, and what that will do is it will give me a pool of funds to be able to purchase devices I otherwise wouldn't buy, to review them, and then to give them away. So the advantage of subscribing is you only have to press that subscribe button. That's it. If I can reach a thousand and get a certain number of viewing hours, which I'm well on my way to getting, then I'll use those funds to purchase these devices and then we'll come up with some sort of system of, of giving those away. Maybe there'll be some sort of, um, you know, we'll take all the people that post comments and randomly award the prize and all that person would have to do is, is pay for shipping of their choice. Um, and then they would have the device for free. So that's, that's what's in it for you. And that's kind of the vision and why, uh, why I'm asking folks to subscribe. And just one example uh, is, you know, books recently released a fairly interesting device, which is called the Palma. I think I've got that name right. Um, and basically it's kind of like an iPod touch, um, but with an e-ink screen. I have no interest in that device personally, but it's certainly uh, cheap enough around 250 that if I had a pool of funds that I'd use it to buy that and I would do a review. So, um, Anyway, just an example of, of, of what might be in it for you. So please subscribe. I'd appreciate it much. And uh, as always, leave comments, uh, like the button if you like the video. And I do reply to, to most comments. So uh, I'm looking forward to seeing those. Let me know if you have any questions. And until next time, I will catch you later.